marker. up um, my aunt she's a singer in Portugal um, but she lives here in America so I was kind of always around her and her music um, and also I did chorus when I was in elementary and middle school and I was super passionate about it even though I didn't like to admit it um, like in middle school everyone would be like oh we have chorus class and I would be like oh yeah like I don't want to go to that, but then we'd get there and I'd be singing my heart out. Um, yeah, I would say that's pretty much my background. Both of my parents are from Portugal. My mom is from the Azores, which is a group of islands. And my dad is from Madeira, which is also another island in Portugal. Um, both of them were born there, um, lived there for a while, and then moved here. Um, so I am born here in America, but I do have a very heavy influence of Portuguese culture um, for my family. In my life and going to college, I'm also a first-generation student. It's so different when you're trying to navigate things that are like as American as college and you don't have that adult figure to help you um, or they're kind of learning at the same time as you. Um, and a lot of times I kind of had to like translate things back and forth, um, not necessarily language, but just like concepts of school and stuff. It was around when COVID started, I would say is when I started pursuing music um, more seriously and that's when I was really focusing on writing. I was also going through a lot emotionally at that time in my life and so it was the perfect outlet for me to express my thoughts creatively as an artistic person. And yeah, that's when I started taking it seriously. I think it was never super clear, but I would always have like little signs here and there pushing me towards it. Um, like when I was younger, my aunt was shooting a music video for her song and I was probably like four or five and she wanted me to be in it, but I was like so like shy and I was like, no, no, I don't want to be in it. I don't want to be in it. And they were like filming it in our like backyard. And then while they were filming it, I literally started bawling my eyes out and I ran inside. I was having FOMO. I was like, oh, I wanted to be in the video. Like I wanted to sing. Like I knew every word to the song and everything. Like I think there was always kind of small signs that kind of pushed me towards music. Um, and once I started like being more self-aware, that's when I started to realize that it was kind of my calling in a sense. Said I never had the fight in me to make things right. When I could just lay you down and watch you SZA has always been um, one of the, like my biggest influences from when I started doing music and her album Control. I would listen. I know every word to every part of every song on that album. I think just her her form of art and expressing herself is beautiful, um, and I loved how unique her sound was, and that was something I wanted to emulate of like having a unique sound. I would have to say Mariah the Scientist. <laughs> I think um, we have very similar tones and cadences, and I know we'd be able to make something out of the world, out of this world, if we work together. I would love to do that. I think I'm still experimenting because I am so new in the music um, to figure out what my sound is. I'm definitely still learning. But I've always been drawn um, towards that alternative r and B. I I would say mellow, um, soothing type of energy in my music. 
I focus heavy on the lyrics too. It's not just the melodies or just the instrumental. My favorite project that I've put out so far would have to be Carry On. The song's called Carry On. Um, I actually made that song alongside um, Clark, who's my producer. Um, and he's also helped me a lot um, music-wise and with my career and where it's going. I think the reason I love that one so much is because we kind of had full creative control over what type of vibe we wanted. And it was the first time that I really got to like craft and structure a song because usually you just take beats that are already made like off of YouTube and you can't really do anything with it. It is what it is. Um, so working alongside a producer and being able to create it um, as we go based off of the energy um, was super fun. And then also just it has a upbeat feeling to it. Even though the lyrics are about like moving on and it seems like something sad, it actually has a very upbeat tone to it and the rhythm is, you know, the rhythm's there, so. I think Carry On was kind of my way of letting go of the past and like truly moving on from things. As much as the song sounds like it's me talking to a guy about moving on, it's more so about telling myself that um, and like letting go of everything. Um, and I think because I was in college too, it also was kind of like a life changing point in my life, you know? So I think the inspiration behind it was just me taking everything from the past and putting it into this song and like being able to let things go with it, you know, and be able to move on after putting it out. Would have traveled the oceans just to see our love in motion. I think the biggest thing that I always have to remind myself of, especially when like I'm performing and I'm like scared to be vulnerable with people, I think the biggest thing for me is remembering that at the end of the day we're all humans and like everything everyone goes through someone can relate to. When I'm performing my song it's not so much me like oh my gosh I'm exposing myself like it's more so I'm like excited to show people that they're not alone um, in case anyone's going through something similar or dealing emotionally with anything similar and maybe like if they struggle with articulating themselves um, and like expressing their emotions, hearing my music might help them see things more clearly, you know, which I think is also an amazing thing about writing music and sharing it. So I've been doing performances um, with the school, um, like at school events, but I would say like my first performance was in Boston at the beginning of this year. And I say that because it was the first time that it was actually a show where people were buying tickets to come see me. They weren't buying tickets for the event and I wasn't like a guest, you know what I mean? Like it was specifically for me. Um, and that had a really good turnout, maybe close to a hundred, I would say. Um, and obviously there were other performers there too, but that was the first time that I like did a full set and I was performing multiple songs, even unreleased songs. Um, and that was amazing. That was by far my favorite performance that I've done. When I hear that, what I actually think of is like people being um, fake, and pretending to support me but not actually supporting me or when I did start making music like I literally would just put it out on SoundCloud. The people that I knew I'd tried to be friends with for so long they never gave me the time of day and then they would hear that I was putting out music and they would come up to me and like excuse my language like kiss my ass about it. That's when I noticed people started to like kind of try and feed off my energy and like take from me. The music industry itself like is already difficult enough, but as a woman, I think it's very easy to get taken advantage of um, and like exploited and 
misused if you're not um, aware and going into it with that mindset. I think I would say my parents are very much my biggest supporters. Um, my my mom's helped me out a lot um, and like encourages me to go to the studio and record and she'll ask me about my songs and stuff like that and the behind the scenes. She hears I have a show and she's like, oh my God, we have to get an outfit. I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, and then my dad, he's like constantly giving me new ideas for songs, which is I was hilarious. He like plays me like Dua Lipa's music and like, he's like, you need to sound like this. You need to make something like this for the club or something. And I'm like, okay, dad, yeah. But they've always been super supportive. And I know um, a lot of parents, they won't support you um, if there's no benefit, you know, they kind of, they kind of brush it off as just like a dream and tell you to let it go. But I think for the most part, my parents have been very accepting in that they'll still encourage me um, to chase that dream until it becomes a reality. I think when I'm performing and I can feel the energy shift where I'm at a point where I feel comfortable on stage, and also I can tell everyone in the crowd is enjoying the music or relating to it or singing along or clapping, dancing, whatever. I think just being around so many people and we're all kind of like in sync and we're all vibing off the same thing and the same energy, um, that's definitely like my favorite part. It feels like you're like on a high almost like when you're in that experience, so yeah. And I think also like, again, that's just like everyone's energy. Like I don't need it to be all eyes on me. Like I want all of us to be having a good time and singing along, you know? I want y'all to just like start making some moves. Like I'm gonna feed off your energy, so. I will say it's a very unique experience because when you go through college, you deal with a lot of life experiences um, and a lot of just like youthful experiences. There's like a freshness to the world. So everything and all your emotions are really like heightened. And when you're going through college, there's a lot of stuff going on. So I think it's allowed me to tap into my creative side a lot more and have a lot more to write about versus like if I wasn't in school or if I was an adult, it's kind of harder to tap into those things because it seems like they happened so long ago but I'm like going through them as we speak so it's easier for me to write. But definitely a hard part about it is being in the environment where there's not a lot of artists or creatives around you and even when I'm home um, on break like I go to the studio and I have all my friends that are artists are local so we're able to hang out and make music together but I will say sometimes it can feel very like isolating when you're at college and you don't have those creatives around you, you know? I know a lot of people probably deal with like imposter syndrome and like thinking that they don't deserve what they're doing or they don't deserve the right to be where they are. Um, and so I think like just having so many people have my back and remind me like, no, like you're doing the right thing, you know? Cause I mean, everyone deals with self doubt sometimes. So um, yeah, I think that's, the biggest thing, everyone's been super supportive from the get-go, which is like a blessing. I'm so grateful for that. My creative process definitely varies based on like where my mind's at at that point in time, because obviously sometimes I'm probably going through a lot and it's more difficult for me to tap into my creative side. But there are times where like, a concept or a melody or lyrics will pop into my head like I've had this happen so many times before I go to bed like I'm laying there with my eyes closed and I think of something and I literally jump up and I like grab my phone or grab a notebook and I just start writing and then next thing you know like two hours goes by and I'm like oh I'm still awake but uh, for the most part it's mostly like I enjoy writing while I'm in the studio 
Um, just because the energy's there and you have people to kind of feed off of, um, bounce off of, and work with. Um, so I think definitely when I'm in the studio, that's like when it flows most naturally. There's no resistance and there's no um, self-doubt or perfectionism, you know, because I'm kind of, I'm just going with the flow with everyone's vibe. Okay. People ask me this all the time and it's like, it's not that exciting of a story. Literally, I just, I always had all my usernames, like Snapchat, Instagram, everything was my name with a 45 after the K. So it was K45 Arena. Um, and then when I got to high school, literally my freshman year, everyone started calling me by my Instagram handle, K45 Arena. And then it turned into K45. So when people would call me K45, I kind of embraced it. And then when I started doing music, I was like, I need an artist name. Like, I don't, I don't want to just use my first name. So, I mean, K45 was kind of the natural decision, natural name to use, you know? I love learning. Um, and so like, even when I'm not in school, I love like watching videos or reading books and just like absorbing as much information I can because I love being able to contribute to conversations. Like when people are talking about anything, I wanna be able to jump in and be like, oh, well, you know, I know this or I learned this and then also like learn from them. And also, I love going to the gym. That's another big thing that um, I do. And that's pretty much like, at this point, it's a part of my character. It's a part of who I am just as much as um, music or being a student is right now. I think the hardest thing is being patient with myself um, and knowing that things don't happen overnight um, until you put in the work. Um, and I think sometimes if I don't get the reaction I'm expecting or a song doesn't sound as good as I'm expecting, I get super discouraged um, and I kind of will like shut down. And that's like not a good trait to have because everything takes time and skills, you have to practice them to get better. Like, you know what I mean? There's always room for improvement. Um, so I think I just being patient with myself and reminding myself that like, you're in this for the long run. So slow and steady wins the race. Like just relax, don't be so hard on yourself all the time. I think that's probably, yeah. It is what it is. You can only deal with what's in front of you, take it, go forward. I just tell myself that a lot to get through things that I might be like emotionally overreacting to. But a quote I actually heard the other day that stuck with me, um, it was on a podcast. This woman said, you give hobby-like effort and you're gonna get hobby-like results. And it like really stuck with me because that applies to everything. Like literally everything, even just the gym, me going to the gym a lot, you get as much out of it as you put in. Um, and that's the same with music. Like if I'm taking music not serious and I'm treating it like a hobby, I can't be surprised when I don't like my music or the way it sounds. And it sounds like I'm just doing it for fun, you know, which there's nothing wrong with doing it for fun, but um, taking it seriously is a whole nother thing. And I think that's something I have to keep reminding myself is like, you need to be taking this seriously 24 seven. Like it's not a hobby, you know? I would say the biggest thing is just um, experiencing everything the music world has to offer and having access to so many like amazing artists and creatives and being able to work with them and learn from them. That's, I guess, probably like one of my biggest goals, like having that experience under my belt. And ultimately, in school right now, I'm studying like legal studies and criminal justice. And I'm super passionate about like restorative justice and rehabilitation. So 
I think down the line, um, also tapping into that and working with that. Um, it's separate from music, but it's also not because, you know, music gives you the access to a lot of resources. When you have those connections, you know, you have a lot more um, ability to make change. I mean, I'm not gonna give everything away, but I definitely am working on a project. And I think the biggest thing I'm focusing on right now is like having a definitive sound, at least for the project. And so I've just been kind of making all different types of music to see what sounds the best. And then I'll just have a huge pool of music and just kind of pick from it. It's just that and just practicing being in the studio and making music consistently is the biggest thing right now. So in this world, I think everyone has the choice to move one of two ways. You move and make choices out of love or out of fear. Um, and if you're afraid to do anything creatively or put out anything that's vulnerable or any type of art, whatever it is, I think the biggest thing is shifting your mindset to a, a place of love and just go for it because you love it. And don't be afraid, even though that's easier said than done. When you move in fear, you're going to look back and regret all the things you didn't do, you know? So um, I always tell myself, no matter how this turns out, I'm not going to be content unless I can confidently say that I gave it my 100% and I was doing it from a place of love and I was actually putting my best foot forward. So I think just, you know, do it because you love it. Don't be so hyper-focused or afraid of what people are going to think or what their reactions are, or even your own opinion of it. Because like I said, you can be super hypercritical of yourself sometimes. Do it with love. Hey guys, it's Karina Owls, aka K45, singer songwriter. Don't forget to chase your dreams and do everything you do with love. And make sure you stream Cold Blooded Killer on all streaming platforms. Mwah!